All right, we still have some people signing on, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone to today's webinar. My name is Jessica Seward, and I'm the Director of Customer Marketing at Threat Connect. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes to go over some housekeeping items, and then I will introduce our speakers for today. Um, so first, everyone's phone lines are muted, just to keep background noise to a minimum. If you do have questions, you can type them into the chat feature on the webinar console, and we will answer the questions at the end of the webinar. Um, and second, the webinar today is being recorded, so we'll be able to send this out um, as soon as we have it ready, either later today or tomorrow. Um, so now I will introduce today's speakers. First up, we will have Richard Cody. Richard is a senior customer success engineer at Threat Connect and has spent the last eight years working in the threat intelligence field. Before joining Threat Connect, Richard worked for the federal government tracking APT group activity. Richard enjoys the outdoors, road trips in his Jeep, and automating analytical tasks in Threat Connect's playbooks. Um, that is a picture of Richard on the top there, though. It's a little hard to see him. He's up there. Um, then we'll hear from John Madre, also a customer success engineer here at Threat Connect. John hails from Charleston, South Carolina, and has worked in the cybersecurity industry for the past eight years in everything from security monitoring to host-based forensics. Forensics. In his free time, he enjoys traveling and flying drones. So that is it for me. I am going to turn it over to Richard now. Awesome. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, so as Jessica said, my name is Rich Cody, and uh, I am joined today by John Madbury. Uh, with our powers combined, we're going to show you some cool stuff revolving around TQL and uh, custom dashboards. You know, John and I wanted to give a, a bit of a more in-depth brief on these topics because, you know, they're, they're really powerful tools uh, to aid, you know, not only in performing analysis within the platform, but also uh, distilling intelligence down into an easily consumable dashboard uh, so you can get the information, you know, that you want as soon as you log into Threat Connect. So for today's webinar, we're going to break it up into a few sections. Uh, so I'm going to cover the TQL portion, uh, and that's going to include me giving you a primer on TQL. Uh, then I'm going to show you some cool kind of one-off queries, uh, you know, followed by uh, building a more complex query from, from the ground up. And after that, John will go into dashboarding uh, with another primer on, on what value dashboards can bring to your security operations, uh, how to make a good dashboard, uh, and then he'll have a live demonstration as well. And then after that, we'll have some time for questions from all of you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So before I can show you TQL queries, uh, you know, first we need to talk about what TQL is. So TQL stands for Threat Connect Query Language. Uh, it's an in-house developed query language for finding data within Threat Connect when a, a simple you know, search just won't do. Uh, so you can see I have an example down here, you know, instead of searching, you know, for the tag China, I may want to display a list of, of threats that are tagged with China that also happen to be associated with incidents that have IOCs that I've, I've observed in my network within the last two weeks. You know, so there's, there's some real advantages in using TQL. Um, the first one being that you can use relative time date increments. Uh, you know, that lends itself really well when you're wanting to to, to build custom dashboards based off of TQL queries, um, where you may want to log in and see a, a constantly updated list of items. Uh, additionally, you can nest queries, uh, which is really cool. It really allows you to, to get super granular with, with the, the type of data that you want to be presented with. Uh, you can also query attribute content, which you know is a real big value proposition in my opinion. You know, if any of you guys have ever sat in on a call with me, uh, you'll know that I'm an attribute evangelist. Uh, you know, I like to say that, you know, we're not at Threat Connect, we're not in the business of, of indicator management, we're in the business of intelligence. Uh, and so using attributes is, is a really, you know, cool way and it kind of, it gets you a bit closer to that intelligence where you're actually capturing context around IOCs, around group items and, and things like that. And they can be completely customizable. So if you have the type of data you don't want, you know, or you want to get in the Threat Connect and it doesn't fit super cleanly to our data model, uh, you know, you can always use an attribute. And then last but not least, uh, you know, you can save your queries. Um, you know, you can, uh, so if you don't want to turn your brain into a, a TQL syntax repository, you can, you know, build a cool query uh, and, and, and then save that for later. Uh, 
And actually, additionally, you know, we have some cool functionality in TQL that allows you to, you know, not only use it for analytic tasks, uh, but also for administrative tasks. So if you want to verify data integrity and kind of, you know, catch any outliers, maybe some bad data or something like that, you know, you can use TQL to, to do it. So here I wanted to show you just a couple, you know, quick example queries. Uh, you know, the syntax here isn't too important. Uh, you know, you don't need to memorize this, uh, but the goal here is to show you that, you know, you can build some pretty meaningful queries uh, in just a few short keystrokes, uh, you know, and then you can graduate all the way down to, to building those more complex and, and really precise queries where you have a very stringent, you know, set of, of uh, you know, uh, parameters that you want to pull data back with, uh, you know, and although, as you can see here, uh, you know, there is a bit of a learning curve to it, uh, you know, with all of the power that TQL offers, uh, we just couldn't really cleanly or feasibly replicate that via just GUI buttons. So don't be scared. Uh, again, you know, just want to show you that, that you know, even the most non-technical analysts can still build some very basic TQL queries that will bring you some value. So you're probably saying to yourself, okay, Rich, we get it. Now, how do we access, you know, this mystical TQL thing? So TQL is accessed via the browse page uh, by clicking on the advanced button. And in the famous words of Bill O'Reilly, we're gonna, we're gonna do it live. All right, so uh, logged into Threat Connect here. Uh, so to get to the TQL uh, query, we're gonna have to go to the browse page. So go over here and we'll click on browse. Hopefully you're all familiar with the browse page. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to move over here to the to the top right, uh, and we're going to click on the button that says Advanced. Once clicked, you can see that the pane over on the left that, that used to show us the various filterable data types uh, has morphed into a TQL Quick Reference Cheat Sheet. Uh, so this is this is a great resource to help you get started because uh, we'll showcase some syntax for some of the more you know widely used queries. So if you want to search for a string in the summary of, of an indicator or a group or filter on things like date last modified. Uh, additionally, you can see we have a, a complete, uh, we have a complete list of the TQL commands. Uh, we actually have a hyperlink here that opens up our, uh, our using advanced query knowledge base article. Uh, you know, this article covers everything from how to access the TQL. We give you some example queries down here. And then if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see we have this, this exhaustive list of, of uh, you know, all of the operators, parameters, and, and data types that those parameters are expecting. So if you're ever having trouble with a TQL query, you know, this should be the first place that you look. Uh, you can also always hit us up in, in the Threat Connect user Slack channel uh, or, uh, or reach out to your customer success engineer and, and they can help you out. Um, but definitely, you know, reference the knowledge base article first, as I always like to say, read the manual. All right, so moving back over, uh, one cool trick I want to show you real quick, uh, you know, before we move on is, is uh, using some of the GUI filters to get some pre-built syntax. So I'm going to go ahead and click on basic here. And you can see here that it's saying, hey, switching to basic is going to clear the current advanced query. Um, you know, I'm cool with that because we haven't really built anything yet. Uh, but, you know, if you are in the middle of designing a query uh, and you need to go back uh, to the basic view, just know that it, it's going to clear it. So you may want to copy and paste that for, for later reference. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit discard. So now let's let's do a little filter in the GUI just to, to you know, let's, let's filter on IP addresses. So we can go addresses and with this little drop down. We're going to do something basic. We'll just say, hey, show me all IP addresses with the tag of Russia. So if I go ahead and do that and hit apply, you can see that we've got some results here. So without clearing any of these filters, let's go ahead and hit advanced. And now you can see that it actually translated our, our uh, GUI filters into TQL syntax. And I like this feature because, you know, let's get started with a bit more uh, to go on instead of having to build a query you know, completely from scratch. Just a little cool trick that you guys might find some value. All right, so now uh, I'm gonna show you some cool one-off example queries that, that honestly were just too good to, to, to pass up on showing you. Uh, you know, I handpicked a few of these examples because, you know, they'll each showcase, uh, you know, a, a unique way to interact with data 
uh, within Threat Connect via the DQL. So I'm going to clear this out, and I'll paste this in here. Uh, so you can see here that uh, you know I'm going to be looking for um, incidents. Uh, so this is actually I'm going to be going in our technical blogs and reports data source here, and we're actually capturing blog posts currently as incidents. And I want to look for blog posts that are written in German, right? So we have uh, the first query. If I go ahead and run this, click on groups. You can see here that you know we're we're pulling back uh, 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 blog posts and, and with the language being German, uh, but we can very easily change this to to French, and we can verify here if we look at the details. You know we've got a couple blog posts here, and we can see they're in French. Or of course, as I'd imagine, most of us speak English, so we can find you know specifically uh, these ones. Now let me show you how I'm I'm able to achieve this, right? So if I go ahead and open up this blog post, the details page of it, and I scroll all the way down. There we are. You can see that we have an attribute called post language. And if I hover over the, the uh, magnifying glass, it may be a little hard to see, but at the bottom uh, left uh, in, the, in the URL parameters, we actually give you the attribute ID and that's how you're gonna you're gonna do querying for content of attributes in TQL. Right? You're gonna do based off the ID. So if I go back to the TQL syntax here, close this out. You can see that I'm saying attribute 1884, which is that post language uh, attribute uh, equals en. Right. So you know it's a pretty simple query, uh, but it it really offers you a unique ability. Uh, you know if you have uh, analysts who you know work in another country or or uh, you know, they want to find blog posts, uh, you know, dealing around a specific language, you, know, you can do that. So next up, I have a query that's going to pull back data based off of that example that I gave you earlier. So let's go ahead and clear Threat Connect Intelligence. I'll clear this out. So this is looking for, uh, you know, threats that are tagged China and are associated to a group, a group type being an incident. And that incident has indicators where the observation count is greater than zero, and the last observed time, I scroll all the way over here, is a two-week window. So this is using that that relative, uh, you know, time time date increment. So if I go ahead and search, uh oh, what happened here? Uh, 14 days. Of course, as you're doing it live, something doesn't work. Oh, there we go. I forgot. Sometimes that trips me up. All right. So you can see here that we actually have a couple results. So brought back APT6 and APT1. And we may actually want to keep tabs on these guys. Uh, so you know, John's going to show us a little bit later how we can we can port this to uh, a, a dashboard. And last but not least, the last one I want to show you here is a pretty simple one. It's going to search for tasks uh, that are open and assigned to me. So the way we're doing that is, again, we're, we're defining, okay, what are we looking for? We're looking for a task. Uh, and then the task assignee is me. And the task status is not completed and not deferred. So these should be open tasks. If I go and search for that, you can see that we pulled back this one. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say that this task has been open for going on a year and a half now, I should probably get on that. <laughs> and while we do have a dashboard widget that, that gives you a lot of this functionality, and John will show that a little bit later, um, the reason why I want to show you this is because you know you may have a unique use case where you know you're a manager and you want to keep tabs on your analysts to see you know hey are, are they getting the things done that they need to be. So you could very easily instead of saying you know me here, I could change this to an analyst name, and then have that query. You know, and have a dashboard chart for each one of my analysts to see kind of what open tasks they're still working on. All right, so we've talked about what the TQL is. Uh, we talked about what the benefits are. So I've shown you some canned examples on how you can tackle data within Threat Connect in a unique way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build ourselves an advanced query from the ground up. Uh, for this, let's pretend we're Energy Company Incorporated, right? We're a brand new player in the field of nuclear energy, and we have some new innovative technology that we're bringing to market. 
Uh, obviously, we're not the only people with a vested interest in nuclear power technology. Uh, you know, there are those with nefarious intentions that you know may may not want to spend their time pioneering new tech on their own. They may want to leverage other people's research. So let's see if we can find some applicable intelligence in the platform. So we're going to start with a basic query. I'm just going to say, hey, I want to see threats. Make sure we've got the correct data owners selected. All right. So we're looking at a list of 57 threats, right? That's all well and good. But let's see if we can't narrow this down uh, a bit more. So let's look for some state-sponsored threats. And to do that, I'm going to add the attribute 35. So if remember, we talked uh, we talked about um, let me grab uh, we talked about uh, being able to filter on attributes. And you can see here we have the adversary motivation type. So that's another attribute that we're gonna we're gonna filter on here, right? So we're gonna say attribute 35 is nation state. All right, so now you can see that we've got 29 results. So we're starting to get there. But let's take it one step further, and we're gonna specifically look for nation state threats that are targeting SCADA and ICS systems. So to achieve this, we're going to add a couple of tags. We're gonna use the has tag parameter here, and then we're gonna give it a couple of a couple of options here. So we're gonna see SCADA or ICS. We run this. You can see we're now down to a much more manageable set of two. Uh, you know, we could even take it another step further if we wanted, and we could we could say, hey, all right, I specifically want to see Russian state threats, right? So filtering on that origin country attribute being Russian Federation. You know, we're down to one result, but I don't necessarily care about just Russian threats. So Show me everything. And now you can see that we've, we've tested the syntax. It works. We're good to go. So let's go ahead and save this. So to achieve that, I'm going to go up here to the top right. And on this ellipsis menu, and you'll see we have a couple options here. So we're going to save current query. And we're going to call this SCADA focused nation state threats. Let me go ahead and hit save. And now if I go back here, to view queries, you can see that we have that one right here. So if I wanted to, you know, come back and run this, you know, next week, uh, I could easily do that just clicking on here. And when I click on it, you can see that, you know, Threat Connect will refresh the browse page and it runs the query for us. And I can do that with a couple of other ones here. So if I go to view queries and say, hey, show me IOC's tag with China and have a, a three plus rating, we can get that settled. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand the mic over to, to John Madre, and he's going to show us some cool stuff with uh, custom dashboarding. All right. Thanks, Richard. Uh, give me a second. I'll look at my screen share here. All right. Can everybody see my dashboard screen? Perfect. I just realized your microphones are muted. All right, so yeah. uh, as previously stated, I'm John Madre. Uh, I'm a customer success engineer with Threat Connect. And really what we wanted to do was get a chance to talk to you guys about, you know, like Cody mentioned, the TQL searches and the dashboards, because this is a fairly new feature that we've introduced in the platform. We really feel like there's a lot of things that you can accomplish and speed up the process of starting investigations and putting that information just right in front of your face. So there's a few rules for dashboards. Uh, this was borrowed from Dan Cole, if you were able to sit in on his dashboard webinar that he presented a couple of months ago. Uh, these are, so we want to build, when we're building dashboards, we want to build them in a way that they're relevant to us. We can go in and build dashboards to showcase all types of information, but if they don't present something to us that we're able to act on, then they're, they're really just pictures and graphs. Um, so one of the first types of dashboards that we can build are comparative dashboards. So these are going to be dashboards that we're looking at trending. We're looking at, you know, comparing, have we seen more observations from a particular source this week as opposed to what we saw last week? So things that are comparing uh, attributes and observations of false positives based on a time frame. Uh, understandable dashboards. So this goes back to what I'm saying. If we are presenting the data, we want to make sure that we're understanding 
what's behind that dashboard? Like, what are we actually looking at here? Uh, so presenting that in a way that anybody on your team that goes and looks at that dashboard, they understand if they see spikes or they see changes in these numbers, what that actually means for your organization. Uh, rate, what direction are things moving in? So this is going to have a lot to do with uh, going back to those observations and those false positives. Are we seeing a lot more observations coming from, especially when we build those advanced queries like what Richard was showing us, uh, are we seeing an increase in observations coming from things that are APT related? Or, you know, that, that helps us identify things in our infrastructure we need to spend a little bit more focus on, those things that we might need to put in some better mitigation practices for it. And behavior changing. So this is kind of runs in line with a uh, rate, but this is this is those things like why did why are we seeing these changes? So if it's something that maybe we've become a target of something that we weren't prior prior be a target of, um, we want to build these dashboards to to start taking notice of those things faster. This is going to give us that information up front and foremost. All right, so the two types of dashboards I'm really gonna focus on today are gonna to be informational dashboards and vanity dashboards. Uh, so informational dashboards, these are the ones that, to me, I, I think these are gonna to pertain to the analysts, the, those NSM analysts, those CTI analysts the most. These are the ones that, you know, we're gonna put those last 24 hour observations, uh, you know, anything from high fidelity to just all of the observations out there. Uh, these are those things that when you come in, you log into the platform, you see that, that's that's kind of indicative view like, okay, these are things that are new and recent in my environment that I want to go in and start an investigation or tackle those early on. Uh, then we'll go into a little bit more granular dashboard. So we might want to see those observations in the last 24 hours, but only show us those observations that are tied to particular threats and particular adversaries. Uh, these are the things if we wanted to create a dashboard and one of the ones we're going to create is a dashboard that is, hey, show me any observations from indicators in the last 24 hours that are tied to a piece of intel that has an APT tag related to it. So we can really start to fine tune those things that we're showing, that we're presenting ourselves. Uh, a lot of what we're going to be doing with dashboards is easily recreatable in the browse screen. Um, but it kind of lends to the fact of, you know, the browse screen, you do have to navigate into the browse screen and pull up those safe searches. With the dashboards, you're able to take that information that you know is relevant to your organization and put it right in front of your face. Um, and then vanity dashboards, these are gonna be those dashboards that are, you know, everybody has those use cases for metrics. You've got those dashboards where your C-level execs, they want to know over time, like, hey, how many indicators are we pulling in from these various sources? How many observations do we have based off of sources? There may be some paid intelligence that you guys have coming into the platform that we want to know, hey, are we seeing, are we getting more observations from this paid intelligence? Are we getting, you know, an equal amount of observations for just open source feeds that are coming into the platform? Uh, a lot of those vanity dashboards are going to be things that we can present that data by time. So, we want to see how many, you know, the number of indicators and observations and those tasks that were completed or those tasks of those tasks in certain times. So we can do by the last quarter or the last week or the last year if we wanted to. Um, these are these tend to be your up and to the right types of dashboards. So you're really not going to see a decrease. They're not going to show you that behavior changing. These are just for sheer metrics, sheer numbers. All right. So we're going to jump in and actually create some dashboards here. So first and foremost, I want to show you something that some of you may not be aware of. So when you first log into the into the Threat Connect platform, you're taking to this My Dashboard screen. Uh, the My Dashboard screen is one of the pre-canned dashboards that Threat Connect's created. And really, it's there just to provide a general overview of your data in Threat Connect. Uh, this is going to give you a few things like, you know, latest intelligence that's come in. Uh, there's top tags and give you a few things like some of this is reminiscent of the earlier dashboards in Threat Connect where we have that that recent history and a few of those things. Now, if you're not looking for, if you mouse over the dashboard drop down up here and you go down to system dashboards, there's a couple of other CAN dashboards that Threat Connect's created to kind of help you along and provide some additional context in the beginning. So we'll start with this source analysis. So this is just, it gives you a detailed breakdown of intelligence over the past 30 days. 
uh, this may this kind of falls in line with more of one of those vanity style dashboards that is going to give you those things that have been trending out over the past 30 days purely around the intelligence that's coming into the platform. Um, I'm not going to go into full detail on everything that are in these dashboards. I do want to point out that just like we have the knowledge base article for TQL searches, we do have a knowledge base article for dashboards. So that I'll go through and explain a lot of what's in these pre-canned dashboards and kind of help you see what value you can get out of those. Um, and then we also have the operations dashboard. So the operation dashboard, it just highlights uh, new and trending stuff over the past weeks, over the past seven days. Um, any kind of recently observed indicators, false positives, popular tags, things like that. Now, I do want to point out with the, and this is going to pertain to all of your dashboards, that with the source analysis and the operations dashboards, the majority of these are driven by the inherent feature within dashboards. So just like you have that My Threat Connect dropdown on the browse screen, you also have this on the dashboard screen now. So we can go in and turn on and off these community sources in our org to update these dashboards and get numbers for specific sources. So in this particular instance, maybe I just want an operations dashboard for the Threat Connect intelligence source. So I can go in and just select that source, you see the dashboards update dynamically in the background to give us the information just coming from that. Uh, and that's really valuable for that source analysis dashboard. So we can start seeing which types of which sources are providing us the most relevant and most important data to our organization. Uh, and then the reason we're all here today is custom dashboards. So actually one thing to point out with any of these dashboards, you have the option over here to copy these dashboards or set them as your default dashboard. So if we copy this dashboard, it's going to actually pull this into when we do the drop down for the dashboards, it'll pull it into this My Dashboard section. You can go in and update these and tweak these to display the data however you want to for your work. Um, so one of the things, like I said, we're here to, to learn how to create these custom dashboards. And I really, if, if you take away nothing from the dashboarding section, that's what I really want you to get here is how to go in and create dashboards that are relevant to your organization and to the individual analysts. You know, we all have our own methods for how we identify threats for how we you know start investigations so this is your opportunity to go in and build those custom dashboards to put the information that you and your organization care about like first and foremost right there in your face so we can more quickly and efficiently start investigations that are going to be relevant and matter to us um, so what we're going to do let's go ahead and jump in i've got a clean dashboard screen here and we're going to build some, these are what I'm calling my NSM analyst focused dashboards. So these are going to be those observational type dashboards and those things that kind of narrow that focus of what I want to see. But first, I want to show you a few of the pre-canned widgets that we can throw on these pages to make them a little more relevant and nicer for you. So when we have a blank screen, we can just start from clicking on add our first card. And we can throw a few widgets on the screen just to make it you know, personalized. So we'll throw, we can put the start and investigation in here. Uh, this box is just, instead of you having to go to the browse screen and search for an indicator or for a particular group, we can start our searches from right here on the dashboard screen. Uh, and I brought this one up to show you, we do have the ability to, when the dashboards are unlocked, we can go in and kind of drag and drop and resize these widgets to fit however we want them. So after we've created our first one, then we have to go in and hit this little plus symbol on the top right to add a new card. Uh, if we want to throw a few things to personalize this dashboard for us, we can say, hey, I want to see my recent history. And we'll also throw in, you know, my open tasks. So these are things that are relevant to me when I log in. We can also drag and drop these to move them around on the dashboard. All right. So. You know, we've got a few things that present some of the data that's already in Threat Connect in a operational standpoint, but we want the, the meat and potatoes. We want to see those things that we need to go out there and act on. So we're going to create a new dashboard card. Now these, I'm going to build these based off of new queries. So that same Threat Connect query language that Richard was just showing you, we can use in these dashboards to kind of build out and see, think, present the data us in a way outside of either a data table, we can present them in charts or we can actually present them as data tables as well. Uh, something I wanna point out would be this inherit owner selection from My Threat Connect. So what I showed you on that 
previous dashboard where we can go in and turn on and off sources. Uh, if this is checked, that's when you go in and turn on and off those sources in the org, that's what's going to affect how those dashboards are displayed. Now, if we turn this off and we go in here and specifically select the sources that we want to run that information against, maybe you only want to see stuff that's in your organization. So we can go in and turn off that inherit and just have the, you know, in this case, the Acme Core org, just have that data displayed to us. So no matter what we select in that My Threat Connect on the dashboard screen, that dashboard card will always stay the same. Uh, for purposes of the webinar, we're going to leave the inherit on. And then, so the first one we're going to build is, you know, that first thing that most people know, well, what have we seen in the network lately? What are some intelligence items that we have out there that we're tracking on that we've observed within our network? So we can take those, we can go into our advanced query section and we'll just say last observed. And then this is where we can really get use out of those relative date and time uh, variables that we have. So we'll go in here and say, show me everything that is today minus 24 hours. So once we click outside of the advanced query block, it's gonna go ahead and update our graph on the right hand side. Now, maybe you don't want to see graphs. Graphs aren't always the prettiest thing that we have out there. So we can flip this over and change it to either number cards. Um, tree map is kind of one of my personal favorites. But whatever is going to present the data to you in a way that you want to see it the best, then, you know, this part is really, it's kind of up to the analyst, however you want to present that. Uh, in this case, we're going to go with number cards. Now, give that card a title. So if this ends up being a dashboard that you share out to other members in your org, because we can create those dashboards. A team lead could go in and create a whole dashboard for what he wants his analyst looking at and share that out for everybody to use. Uh, make sure you put the title of what this data is actually presenting. So here we can just say last observed past 24 hours. All right, and then we're given a few options. Depending on what type of graph you're displaying, we're given a few options on like changing up the ways to present. So some color schemes and some height and width options. I particularly like the Threat Connect color scheme. It doesn't really come through as much on these number cards, but you'll see when we do a tree map that, that those colors kind of pop and stand out a little bit more. I think it looks pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and save this, and we'll see it's created that last observed past 24 hours. Um, so maybe, you know, we're looking at these numbers and these numbers are kind of high. Like we're not going to have an analyst go through and probably check all 2,127 addresses that were observed in the past 24 hours. Uh, so we may want to have that there for informational purposes, but maybe we want to kind of fine tune that a little bit. So we're going to do another last observed and we're going to call them high fidelity in the last 24 hours. Uh, so again, we're going to base this off of a new query. We want to inherit all of that. We want to inherit everything from that My Threat Connect dropdown again. And we're going to do a similar query, except this time we're going to add a few additional parameters to it. So now we can say, and I want to show anything with a rating greater than three skulls and a confidence greater than 70. And I use those numbers because I know a lot of time that's what the majority of the customers out there have pushing over their Splunk instance. So this will kind of give you those things that we know have been recently pushed over as well. And again, we can change. In this case, I'm going to flip this over to a tree map. And then when we switch that to Threat Connect, you know, we get some, some better colors in there. We can save that out. Um, so those are a couple of like, you know, these are just uh, two things that, you know, put that data up there first and foremost in, in front of your face. Like those high fidelity, we see we've definitely narrowed down that focus of, you know, these are the things that we might want to focus on a little bit faster, but let's, let's take it a step further and go into, we'll do another query here. And this is going to be APT related. So we'll do APT related past 24 hours observations. All right, so back down to our advanced query. 
Now, I do want to point out, and like uh, Richard showed you earlier, we can build all of these queries in the dashboard or in the browse screen. So you can present that data and kind of filter that data down to what you want before we throw it into a dashboard. Uh, and I'm going to show you, after we're done with this, I'm going to show you how we can take those saved queries and create dashboards out of them. Um, but from our advanced query here, I actually have this one typed out already, so I'm going to drop it in there. So we're just saying, hey, we want to see any ops or, or any indicators of their observed in the last 30 days that have an adversary that has a tag of APT related to it. So once we click out, it's going to update that. So we see like, this is just narrowing down. We're just displaying, we're, we're just wanting to display the, those indicators. Well, there's only two indicators here. So a graph is really not gonna give us much. Uh, this was a really good chance to like flip over, just give it that number card, or you could give it the tree map, but <clears throat> something else that we can do here is we have this grouping down here on the bottom. So we can go in and change that grouping to present that data in a slightly different way. So maybe we want to display it, in this case, that on what types of tags those two. So we, we know we have two indicators that come back for this. We want to display all of the tags that are related to those two indicators. Uh, or maybe we want to do this by geolocation. So country code, these two indicators are coming back with a US country code for this APT related activity. Uh, so definitely pay attention to these grouping options down here because they're going to give you a way to kind of present that data fairly different than what you would before. That might not be the best example for these particular ones, but something like where we're getting two results back. Maybe we don't want to show a chart because what's the number two going to really tell us? Uh, so maybe we want to present that in a data table. So we flip our display type over to a data table and we're able to go in and say, all right, in this data table, I also want you to show me those observations that we're seeing, how many observations, and give me like a threat rating. So go in here and hit save. And it's going to take that same data and present it to us. Instead of giving us those number cards, it's going to give us a table that we can actually drill down into. And I do want to point out with all of these dashboard cards, I'm not sure why it's, oh, let me scroll up there. But with all these dashboard cards, we can click and drill into these dashboards. So as you click on those things, that query that you use to build out and present that data in that dashboard, we can go in there and drill down into it and present that stuff in the uh, browse screen. That way from here, we can go in and pivot and kind of look at further analysis. So let's go back to our dashboard screen here. Uh, and the last thing I want to show you guys is I want to show you how we can go in and take those saved queries that were created and present them in a dashboard. So those are things that we already know are relevant to us. We've obviously built the saved queries for them. So fairly simple. As you go in and save a query, it's presented in this dashboard card over here. So I took Richard's SCADA query that he had and went ahead and built it out in my own browse screen. So when we click that, it takes all that information that he had, goes ahead and builds it out in our advanced query section. Now, this is another one that, you know, showing that there's four threats here really isn't gonna give us much in terms of like visibility into this. So we wanna take and flip this over to a data table. Now, I wanna point out with the columns that if you notice next to these different column types, it tells you what type of information that you're displaying that these column types would be relevant for. Uh, so in this particular one, we know that the data we're presenting is a threat. So we see that upvotes are relevant to threats and so are downvotes. So we can go in and turn on those upvotes and downvotes um, and then everything else will leave the same. We'll go up here and click save. And it takes that same information that he was able to bring back in the browse screen, but now we have dynamic information. So every time you log in, this is gonna update and show any changes in that query without you having to go into the browse screen to load it. Uh, and that's all I have in terms of showing you guys how to create the dashboards. I highly recommend getting in there, identifying those things that are important to you and your organization and the things that you're really looking for and create dashboards that are centered around that type of information. And with that, I will pass the reins back over to Jessica for questions.
Okay, thank you, John. And thank you, Richard. Um, lots of good information there. Um, so as John said, now we will move on to questions. Um, let's see. We've had a few questions about the recording. That is going to be sent out hopefully either later today or tomorrow. We'll post it to YouTube and send that link out um, as soon as we have it available. Um, we also had a question about the, um, the knowledge base article that Richard showed earlier. Um, I will send that out a link to that article out as well as a link to one about the, our dashboards out. Um, in the follow-up email along with the recording, so you'll have that. Um, next question. Okay, I created and saved a TQL query. Why can't anyone else in my org see it? Hey, Richard, that, you... Yeah, this is where I can jump in. That's actually a that's a, a great idea. Um, I think we are uh, looking to to introduce that functionality uh, to be able to share TQL queries out with people within your organization. Uh, it's unfortunately something that didn't make it into version one, um, but we'll definitely you know take that back and and, and look at adding that. So. Okay, great. Um, that is all the questions we have right now. If anyone else has any, you can certainly follow up with us by email. Um, and we thank you for joining today. Thank you very much, Richard and John. Thank Thanks you, guys. Everyone. Bye, everyone.